Hello and welcome to Worldview TV Talk Show. My name is Reverend Dr. Brenda Bird, and this segment today we are speaking of women of insight. I have with me today Reverend Pamela Jones. And you notice that I always, when I bring a woman or someone onto the show, I always think of them in the same image as one of the women from the Bible. And so when I think about Pastor Pam, I think about Naomi, because she saw the uniqueness of Ruth and the turn back in Oprah. So I always uh, uh, put together one of the women from the Bible. And so she is my Naomi, because she has poured into my life as well, which you will hear more about in a moment. So first of all, I want to say welcome, 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 Pastor Pam. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Yes, you are my woman of honor oh. and my woman of insight. And so I was, I'm very honored to have you on the show today. So I want to read your bio so we can mm -hmm. introduce you officially to our listening audience. Right. Thank you. So today we have with us Ms. P Dr. Pamela Boykin-Jones, an accomplished female executive with extensive experiences in human resource management at the executive level. She has excelled in, her, in high performance cultures that value collaboration, empowerment, productivity, quality outcomes, standards, and the recruitment and development of a superior workforce. Pastor Pam is known for her energy, courage, and tenacity in pursuing her goals. Pastor Pamela is talented in innovation and developing successful businesses, strategies, including setting goals, objectives, success indicators, and action steps. She is highly skilled in working with people from diverse cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds and has expertise in capacity building managing large teams, and achieving goals. In her former role as vice president at Merrill Lynch, she worked in multiple locations nationally and internationally with budgets exceeding $10 million. She has also held positions as director at the College of New Jersey and director at Dunn and Bradstreet. Pastor Pamela is the founder and CEO of Communities and Cooperation Incorporated. This successful nonprofit faith-based organization collaborates with the incarcerated and formerly incarcerated population, those that are impoverished and fragile families and at-risk youth. She has sustained this organization from 2004 to the present day. Pamela has a master's degree in in organizational leadership and development and is a certified organizational developer and since earned her doctorate of ministry. She is also an ordained elder, pastor emeritus of Liberating Word Ministries in North Newark, New Jersey. She is currently the director of the Shoshone Baraka Center in North New Jersey. She is married to her childhood sweetheart David L. Jones and has two daughters, Tiffany L. Jones and Dr. Tremaine Jones at the the bar. The bar. Uh, the bar. Mm -hmm. Pastor Pamela and her husband live their dreams of helping others with compassion and sincerity by setting goals and achieving outcomes that make a difference in people's lives. I present to you, my audience, this phenomenal woman this woman of insight, Pastor Pamela Jones. God bless you again. God bless you as well. I'm so excited about being here today. Thank you for the invitation. I'm honored to be here with you. Well, thank you so much for accepting my invitation. So let's get right into okay. our question and our discussion. All right. My first question is, what do you think 
are the most important qualities of a successful leader. Now, our listening audience uh, makes up a number of married women that are mm -hmm. mothers, that mm -hmm. are stay-home mothers, mm -hmm. women that are in business, women that's running organizations, women mm -hmm. that's serving. So we are leaders in so many different capacities. Mm -hmm. So what would you give us today to show us what is the quality that a successful leader need, whether she's a stay-home mom, leading a family, or she's out in the community leading a, a job on the outside? You must be principled, okay. and you must have ethics and integrity. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you need to master in your life is just making sure that you're always truthful. That is a part of excellence. Mm -hmm. When someone can depend on you and you're consistent in being able to say the same thing repeatedly and not have any discrepancies, that's honorable yes, because people will trust you. Mm -hmm. Forming trust is just an opportunity in and of itself. There are some people that are trusted and then there are some people that are not trusted. Absolutely. We want to be on the element of trust. And why is that so important? Absolutely. Because when you're trusted, then you're dependable. Absolutely. Tr being trustworthy and dependability, they're almost one and the same. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you have to make sure that if you say you're going to do something, being truthful means you're really going to get it done. Absolutely. There was a, a pastor that I was under, Pastor uh, his, Reverend Dr. Charles E. Thomas okay. of the New Hope Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. And he trained me. And one of the things he said to me was just having the integrity that's needed in order to be consistent means that you don't make excuses. Uh. He says, excuses are simply a means of manufacturing lies to not be able to do what you care not to do, but you have already committed to do it. Mm -hmm. So I always thought about that, and that's a part of integrity. Always say what you're going to do and do it. That means then that people can depend on you. That means that you're a person of trust. So it doesn't matter what walk of life, whether you're the stay-at-home mom, whether you're the business executive, whether you're the woman in the ministry and clergy, it doesn't really matter. It's just across the board, just being able to have that level of integrity, being truthful, and then being dependable. All of those things will make you successful. It will open doors for you as well. Absolutely. When people know that you're dependable, they'll call on you as opposed to someone who may or may not show up. Mm. So that gives you a cutting edge. That's what makes you successful in life. Everybody needs to have the cutting edge of at least being dependable. Absolutely. And that's very easy to do if you just stay focused, if you're consistent, and if you have a heart for God. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes having a heart for God, people don't understand exactly what that means. But just think about it. What if God was inconsistent with you? Mm -hmm. What if you called on God and he would answer sometimes and answer your prayers, and then other times he would not? That would be a horrible situation. Yes, Lord. So that mm -hmm. attribute is a godly mm -hmm. attribute that we can trust in God. And because we're people of God, mm -hmm. then people need to be able to trust in not you per se, but the attribute of God in you. So you want to make sure that you always put him first Absolutely. because that helps us in so many, many ways. Mm -hmm. I know some people believe and maybe some people watching are not believers, mm -hmm. but I want to tell you something about that. There's so many things going on in this world. In fact, I just left uh, my, my company and um, right next door, uh, and, and unfortunately in parts of the building you can hear through the wall, mm -hmm. and there are people next door who are doing chants and they believe that that's what's going to make them successful and that they're burning incense and they're believing in their own you know faith one of the things that i just know about god is i don't have to go through all of those rituals thank you lord amen he just accepts us just the way we are mm -hmm. and so i can trust god to accept me the way that i am mm -hmm. And so with that being said, I can trust others just as they are. Mm -hmm. And that helps me to be dependable because I don't make a restriction because of what type person you are. I, can do, I don't have to go home and burn incense or do other things in order to overcome a personality because God has all of that. So I just encourage you, be trustworthy, be dependable. Oh, and just if you can in your heart, 
I would encourage you to just try God. That's it. Try God. That's yeah. it. Try mm-hmm. God. Yeah. And you know, that's why I, I love talking to you because you're seasoned. Mm-hmm. And um, what I learned from watching you, you know, I watched you for a long time before we actually uh, connected. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. and um, in watching you, I've always watched your sincerity, mm-hmm. your gentleness, but your truth. Okay. And that's what I, I, I feel is so important, in, especially in any type of leadership, whether mm-hmm. we're leading children in our home or yeah. we're working on a job. Yeah. It's a certain character uh, that we need to have. And it's so important. I was, I was reading in your book, what we're going to talk about a little bit later, um, about being whole and in heal within yourself mm-hmm. so that you mm-hmm. can be able to work with others. Absolutely. And a lot of times we do not develop the heart that we need by dealing with our own stuff and we're working mm-hmm. in people helping ministries, yes. people helping services, whether we're in the home or not. We're mm-hmm. taking care of our husband, our children. That's people helping. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If we're working on the school board or we go into the PTA meeting, mm-hmm. that's people helping. Yes. And so a lot of times when we always say the old adage, hurting people hurt others. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's getting kind of old, Pastor Pam. Is. You it know is. what I'm saying? Deal with your stuff That's right. so that we can be better for one another. That's so true. On that sentence, I want to ask you this. What do you think are the best ways to develop leadership skills? Because I have people who sometimes they, they're gifted, mm-hmm. but they just don't know how to project mm-hmm. that leadership skill that is mm-hmm. so needed in whatever respect that they're serving in. Right. So how do they develop uh, leadership skills? What, do you, what would you say to that? Well, leadership skills, the first thing you need is to understand who you are and what you have to contribute. What do you bring to the table? There's so many people that are artificial, meaning this, they want to be like someone else or they want to do it like someone else and they think that that's the success of leadership. Mm -hmm. As a leader, you're chosen and you're called out because there's something unique about you Mm -hmm. that can be of a benefit to the kingdom building here on earth. Mm -hmm. And so kingdom building here on earth is simply just making sure that the earth is a better place. That's it. Mm -hmm. The earth is a better place. And so if you have a means by which you can make the world a a better place, then you need to utilize that of yourself. Now, you were talking about brokenness. Um, If you're broken, it's hard to lead because there's always a haunting factor in being broken. And it comes out. You know, it will eventually come out. You can put up a facade. Mm -hmm. You can be a person that... Uh, you want other people to believe that you are, mm. but that kind of ends. The truth kind of mm. penetrates through that because yes. if you're upset, let's give it just any day. You know, it's ups and downs. You can have a good day and you can have a bad day and you can have a combination day where it's up and down <laughs> all on the same day, all in the same yes. hour. And as those dynamics change, the real you will come out. Mm. You know, there's this old saying that, you know, what comes out is when you squeeze a lemon, you know, it'll the, the, what's inside will come out. Absolutely. Well, those ups and downs will squeeze you. That's You'll right. be a squeezing lemon and things Bitter. in you <laughs> will come out. That is for sure. So, you know, it's best not to be artificial. That's it's right. best to be you and it's best to take care of those things that hinder you. Yes, you know, yes. just think of the worst case scenario of what could happen during the course of a day because of some things that you're lacking, some things that you're afraid of, Mm -hmm. some things that you're coping with. And so it's best to get those things taken care of. Sometimes you just need to sit with yourself. That's it. Just sit with yourself. Mm -hmm. We're so busy trying to be what other people want us to be that we really don't sit with ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, early in the morning, like this morning, today is a very busy day for me, Mm -hmm. but early this morning at about 3 o'clock, I'm sitting with myself. I'm up, I'm in the bed, I'm sitting up in the bed, and I'm just thinking, like, you know, okay, so you're doing all of these things, and you you have such a busy schedule, but what is the most beneficial thing in your doing what you're doing for today? Mm -hmm. And praise God for that. Mm -hmm. And I says, I am busy, but God, I thank you that I am busy. That's right. I thank you that all of these things, all of these tasks that I have to accomplish, you didn't put any more on me than I could bear. That's right. I will not complain. I will not stress. I'm writing grants. I'm in the midst of writing grants. And I says, you know, God, 
I am not stressing. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But what God has for me, it's going to be for me. That's and if right. I get them, fine. If I don't get them, I have the resolve and the faith in God that that's not the door he wanted me to walk yeah. through. Yeah. Now, once upon a time, I would stress. Mm. I would say, like, oh, my goodness, if I don't get this grant, if this doesn't happen, if things don't go, what I'm saying is if things don't go my way because right. I want it that way, right? right? It's not necessarily that it's going to be that way. So one of the things you have to do is to recognize that it's not about you. So when I'm clearing myself up in the morning at 3 o'clock, I always tell myself, 4 o'clock, whatever the time, it's not about me, mm -hmm. that I am on a mission. My success will be the success. The doors will open that will open. The doors will shut that will shut. Mm -hmm. And I just have to have enough faith to keep on walking and to keep on living, mm -hmm. put a smile on my face, and make my day worth it. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And I know some of you that are watching us are getting so encouraged, you know, because we have a tendency of getting stuck yes you know because you're looking at the assignment you're yes. looking at the things that need to need to be done the yeah. house needs to be clean the clothes need to be washed mm -hmm. and you got to pick up the kids from school you're on the on the job and the boss want has a deadline for you yes. and you're going through all of this stuff and I remember when we were in a seminar with Pastor Pam, and we're going to talk about empowering women to triumph over ministry challenges. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at that and I said, wow, life is a ministry yes. for us. And one thing she said, and you just heard her say a few minutes ago, sit with yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Self-care is so, so, so important. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you are not healthy to take care of anyone else. And you know, I, I'm listening to her and we're talking about not taking care of yourself and things will come up. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say, you know, and this is scriptural as well. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, mm -hmm. the mouth speaks. speaks. Mm -hmm. Whatever is in that heart yes. is gonna come out of that mouth That's eventually. Right. And sometimes you can just listen to someone talk and you mm -hmm. can hear their anger, you can hear their brokenness, you can hear their stress. And so another part that I was reading in your book is, is talking about being a good listener. Mm -hmm. Being a good listener. Sometimes we so quick to give an answer, we so quick to respond, and we don't really listen. That's right. You know, we sometimes we're trying to give the answer and we haven't identified with the question. Mm -hmm. So it's important, ladies and gentlemen that are watching, sit with yourself. Yes. So I want to talk to you. We're talking about stress levels and mm -hmm. we're talking about mm -hmm. being healthy. How do you deal with stress and maintain a healthy work life balance? What do you do to take care? of Pastor Pam mm -hmm. to get your mind at peace and with everything that you do. People don't know what I read from your bio is much more extensive, but her bio alone would have taken up the whole shelf. So we took out some of the quality pieces, but she does so much. And then she pours into others. What she was saying earlier is not just about her. Mm -hmm. She lives that. Wherever she can help, she help. Wherever she can encourage, she encourage. If she give you her word, she's there. You know, and this is what we need in this time. With all the stress and crazy that's going around, we all need people that are solid, you know, and know what they're doing. And so I would encourage you, whatever you love doing, pray and ask God about it because we all have an assignment. I teach this all the time. We yeah. all have something productive to do. And the important key she said to us is stop looking at others. Stop trying to be like others. You are totally unique. Mm -hmm. God broke the mold when he made you. And so he has an assignment that is cut out exactly for you. And if you find that assignment, you will be more happy in what you do. And so I'm happy doing the show. I'm happy working in people service ministry because that is the assignment I know God has given me. And I know I would be more effective because it's not about me. Absolutely. So how do you maintain that healthy work-life balance with all that you do? Mm -hmm. Well, my day begins with my sitting with myself. But then after I talk to myself about what am I going through, then I pray. Okay. And I ask God to just make me better. 
I ask God to just give me the insight for the day that everything that I should do, allow it to happen, and anything that I'm not supposed to have done during that course of a day, that he would block it and I would accept it because it's about the mission of being able to do what you've been called to do. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, I'm just a person that when I get started, I wanna always uh, say this in my prayer, I wanna be in your will, Lord, mm -hmm. and not in the way. You yeah, know, some of us are in the way and we're not in the will because we want to do what we want to do. Let's take an example, a mother who's trying to get her child out that morning to get them dressed, to get them fed, to get them out to school, trying to figure out all that's gonna go on with them during the course of the day. Did you get your homework assignment yes. done? Did you pack your backpack? All of the things that are needed. Uh, you know, just making sure, did you brush your teeth? You know, wait a minute, I didn't hear that water running in the bathroom. Right. Just all of the things that kids try to get by with. And so how do you, 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 you can't manage because you can't even think of yourself. You're so busy trying to think of your child. So what you need to do is to organize your day. You need to really begin the day before to plan the next day. Absolutely. And I find that to be very, very important. So in the morning, you can pray about those things that you're going to get done for that day. So that's the, uh, I think that's one of the answers is pre-plan your day. Yes and then be led as you pray, as you do whatever is needed uh, during the course of that morning to make sure that your plan is executed in the will and that you're not in the way, uh, that's one way to get started. It's, 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 it's just very, very possible for people to uh, be able to get done so many things if you prioritize yes. and ask God to help you to prioritize your day. So what do you want to get done first? What do you want to get done secondly? But always begin, sit with yourself and then pray. Pray. Sit with yourself and then pray. Why? Because you need to know what you need to pray for. Absolutely. And sometimes when you sit with yourself, that makes all of the difference. Absolutely. So, you know, starting out your day, organizing and planning the day before, praying about having the needs met once you define what your needs are for the day, and then asking for God's protection. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to always have encounters during the course of a day. You pray for your children. You pray for your family. You just pray for the world because we're in a time now where it's very, very stressful Challenging. just yes. looking at the news. Yes. You yes. know, you start out in the morning looking at the news before you pray. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a tough rest of the day. So, you know, it's, it's just all of those things, prioritizing, praying, just make sure you first sit with yourself pray and ask for the things be unique ask God to allow you to continue to be the unique person that you are you know and 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 when you go to work sometimes especially in in work environments they want you to be like somebody else and they always use somebody else as an example mm -hmm. and then you're trying to mimic and to be as quick or as sharp or be as articulate as the other person but maybe you're not as articulate as the other person but you know you're dependable That's right. so just ask God to show you your own strengths and, mm -hmm. and and be able to play to those strengths yes and and, and it's just it's, it's inevitable that if you pray every day, if you prioritize, if you just then try to ask God to make you that unique individual and that mm -hmm. you don't try to mimic and mirror someone else, Absolutely. your day will go a whole lot smoother. And then because you've already prayed for protection, That's right. when things come up, you know, he's going to make a way out mm -hmm. of no way. I've watched just things unfold uh, where, you know, and I was telling you, I was writing a grant, right? So this morning I was up early and I, I sat with myself. I did my prayers. I you know, asked for God's protection. And then the, I was going to print out something so I could read it from the grant. The printer would not work. <laughs> then when I got the printer working, the ink was low. So it stopped printing because it ran out of ink. Mm -hmm. And I said, so you know what I says it this is not what I'm supposed to be doing right now <laughs> so no. I just put it down and I just you know said there's something else that I need to be doing because it's not working you know we force and try to make things fit yes I if I had sat there and tried to just go through all I would have been so tense I would have had so much stress mm -hmm. so the point I'm making is when things aren't working out well because you've already prayed for protection, mm -hmm. God has a way of speaking to you.
to let you know that there's something else that needs to be a priority over that. Absolutely. And that one thing that was a priority over that was to make sure that I was in a place where I knew when I left out of the house that I had my lunch packed, that I would have something other than eating the snacks and all the stuff that I kind of normally do, yes. that I had a, a nice sandwich, I had a can of soup that I put in my bag, I got all of that ready first, and I says, aha, when I did that, I went back to the printer and I says, I'm going to stop. The printer had started printing again. Yes. So I said, you know what, it, it, God has a way of speaking to you. If you really trust in God yes. and you can really hear his his voice to reduce the stress you have to depend on God yes, you really so really do that's so true so. and I'm, th I'm thinking about what you're saying about prioritizing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so that works for me too yes you know yes. I might write down five things I need yes, to do that yes. day and then I prioritize but this is something that has to do be done and this has to be done yes. and I try to get through that list mm -hmm. but what I also find if I don't complete the whole list that's fine too yes you know we get all rattled you know I had five things to do and I only got things <laughs> four, four done thank God that you got the four done that's right you know that's and right. put number five on priority that's list right. tomorrow that's as right. the f number one priority that's right. So for me, that started to work because I, I do so many diverse things mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it can get cluttered sometimes, yes. but I love it. Yes, I love the yes, freedom yes. to be able to work Helpless Hands, That's to be right. able to work Celebrate Recovery That's Redemption, right. to be able to work at my church. To yes. I, I like the flexibility mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be able to, to especially at this age, I'm not going to tell my age, but at this age, I like the freedom uh -huh. to be able to maneuver, yes. but you, you'll you go crazy if you don't have the That's priority. Right. And same thing happened to me last night. Uh -huh. You know, we had the, the event yesterday, the uh -huh. Destiny of Newark, and the speaking engagement yesterday. And so one of the, the sisters that's so faithful and so, so dependable, she doesn't drive, but she is so faithful so we always work out a way uh -huh. for her to get to to the events yes. and I get her back home okay. so we leave there I get her back home thank God I didn't get caught in the, the New York traffic uh -huh. however I had to get back to be ready for the celebrate recovery that night and so it was just everything that could happen was happening uh -huh. in between uh -huh. You know, and so, but I still had a letter that I needed to to get out mm -hmm. for South Ward, and I needed to do this. So I'm like, okay. So I said, once I leave the group and get everybody done, I'm going to run home, and I'm going to get this letter out. Because I always try to keep letters typed up so I can just revise. And yes. do. It takes a lot of the stress. Uh -huh. Get there, and I'm in the midst of typing. Boom, and the internet dies. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm like, uh -huh. you got to be kidding yes. me. But praise the Lord, things wind up working out. But in those moments, what do you do? A lot of times people get to pulling their hair out and all mm -hmm. that. No, just step away. That's right. That's step, right. Away step away and breathe yes. and let your your emotions and everything calm yes. down. Yes. That keeps you from being crazy that's because if you right. keep at it, it just gets worse. That's right. It gets worse. That's right. So I thank you for that. So that's what's one of the things I learned to do, to step away too. Yes. I want to change the, the conversation mm -hmm. just a little mm -hmm. bit because you work so much with uh, communities in cooperation, yes. and you work with women in reentry, and mm -hmm. I know that that is your heart. I'm yes. going to get back to this, but I know mm -hmm. you need to share that because I know it's families out here yes. who have women, family, mothers, mm -hmm. daughters, aunts, uncles, nieces, cousins that are incarcerated. Yes. And I yes. know you work with them coming out of reentry, getting their lives together, mm -hmm. and so many beautiful testimonies yes. of the lives that God has used you to change mm -hmm. in very difficult situations. Yes. So would you talk to us about that ministry? Absolutely. You know, one thing I can say, it just proves to me that God is faithful. Yes, Lord. These are probably some of the most concerning areas of life that when you're trying to just survive. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us are okay. But imagine if you were in a situation where you didn't know where you were gonna get your next meal, you didn't know where you were gonna live, you're temporarily maybe living with someone who doesn't even want you to live there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you just really can't even buy a pair of shoes that maybe your shoes are too tight and you can't even, afford, you have to just put them on mm -hmm. and just struggle through. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you see the winter is coming and you don't even have a winter coat but you're feeling the coolness of the breeze and you're then saying, I've got to find a job, and I've, I've got to be able to, you know, try to get my children back. Um, you know, they're, they're with my grandmother, or they're with my mother, and, um, you know, so you have so many things, and where do you begin? How do you begin to prioritize your life once everything has stopped? 
-hmm. and you're inside of one room in a cell and then you're able to go out in the yard you know when you're told you're able to go to the restroom when you're allowed all of the things that are so calculated that your life is no longer your life and then you have to come out and make all of these decisions and you have absolutely nothing so with that being said how then can you work with people and to help them to get from one place to another? You gotta go from A to B. You yes. can't stay at A, you've got to move to B. Forward, so yes. trying to make sure that people in moving them forward, that they understand they're unique and they have to move forward in their own way. But they don't have the confidence, they don't have the wherewithal sometimes to go through the processes like filling out an application so that they can get food stamps or filling out an application so they can get some level of subsidy. So how do you work through that? Well, one of the things is that God is so faithful, and, and that's why I love, I love this ministry. Yes. I love this ministry. I've watched God make so many times something where nothing exists. Mm -hmm. It is the most amazing thing. It is the most amazing thing. And these women go from pulling their hair out to then being able to have coaching, and, and, and we talk about the Lord, but we also figure out what's a priority for your life. Mm -hmm. Some people is getting my children back. Some people is I need a job. Some people is I need money right now. Mm -hmm. Some of them have like, oh, where I am right now, forget everything else, just find, I, I need somewhere else to stay because they don't want me here anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's taking all of these different nuances and dealing with different people, but understanding that God can do what no man can do. Mm -hmm. God can open doors that no man can shut. Mm -hmm. And watching the faithfulness of God in helping. Now it's a lot of work and there's a lot of doubt. It takes a lot of one-on-one, um, -on -one, being with individuals, and that's why you have to just be so prepared yes. with yourself and not having your own trauma and your own drama because you're dealing with people that you're gonna have to help redirect mm -hmm. their thinking. Mm -hmm. It's all about thinking. Let me tell you something. I can get you uh, uh, food pantry food. I, I can try to help get you another place to live. You know, all of these, but if your mind mm -hmm. is not dealt with, that's right. It's, it's a, a it, it, it's a it's a mental mindset mm -hmm. that you must change. So you have to be trusted. Yes. Um, and that's where your dependability comes in. If they see that you're dependable, if you're going to meet with them, if you say you're going to help them with doing X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. and you stick to it, no matter how difficult it is. Sometimes they say, well, I want to uh, apply for for assistance. And then you find they don't know how to use a computer. Mm -hmm. And you were thinking, I'm going to help you get through the process, but then you have to actually do it yourself yes. to help them because out. they don't know how. They don't know how. And at the same time, you don't want to just do everything for them. You have to sit and allow them to do it, like in baby steps. Yes. And then you, where you, as you could have done it in 20 minutes, it's taking them almost two hours. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to have the wherewithal and have the patience and, 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 and that's, that is key because you've got to help them to change their mindset. This is what a change of mindset for them is. Yes. It's from saying, I can't to I can. That's right. That's the battle right there. Mm -hmm. Most of them feel defeated before they ever get started. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so showing them another mindset that there is a way, mm -hmm. that you can get through this, it might not happen in 60 seconds or less. And we live in this microwave world where everybody right wants yes. everything yesterday. Mm -hmm. But they learn patience, mm -hmm. mindset change. Mm -hmm. They learn to endure, mindset change. They learn to be focused, mindset change. Mm -hmm. They learn to prioritize, mindset change. Mm -hmm. All of the things that are needed, and I don't care if you're coming home from prison or what your life is if you're just a, a school teacher or mm -hmm. you're a crossing guard. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have the right mindset in order That's to right. be successful. If you get mad at kids and you're a crossing guard and you say, get over here, and you're screaming and hollering and doing all of that, 
you know, you've got to change your mindset before Absolutely. you can be successful as in that job. Him, so he shall become. That's right. That's and right. if you spend everything you get as soon as you get it, mm-hmm. you're never going to be able to see the blessings or the benefits if you save something or prioritize and put a budget together mm-hmm. and and have something for a rainy day. That's mindset. But by having the mindset changes that are needed, no matter what the topic, whether it be finances, whether it be housing, whether it be dealing with your children, family dynamics, whether it be marriage, no matter what, if you don't have the right mindset mm-hmm. to deal with those things, you're always going to have the problem persist and it's never going to be resolution. And you're never going to be able to get from point A to point B to move forward. Absolutely. That mindset of teaching them how to fish. That's right. You know, That's and, right. And, and, and people helping, that patience is so key. Patience is Patience key. and self-control because, yes. you know, like you said, you know how to do it and you might want to jump in and get it done fast, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they need to learn. learn. That's so right. the only way you're going to learn is by doing. That's right. I know you have a lot of success stories, so give us some of the success stories because we have some graduates and different ones okay. that, that have been blessed, that have come through the program and continue to pop in and now and then and they're consistent and mm-hmm. they're doing well. You know, it, it, there's so many, I'm gonna just have to pick one or two, but uh, the one that comes to mind the most is uh, we, we had someone um, who was just trying to make it, was doing, just making great strides. And all of a sudden, um, as they began to work, um, and, and this is a mindset issue, they were getting home later and later, but they lived in a place where they had a curfew. They needed to be there by a certain time. In fact, when you come home sometimes on parole, Mm -hmm. you have to be in, even if the place doesn't have a a curfew, there's a parole uh, decree that says you must be in by a certain time. time. But you know, at night, the bus is running late, Uh, They're not allowed sometimes to have cell phones, so she couldn't call anybody. But she finally got this place, and she was working, and she was able, she was on her way in that transitioning of being able to self-sustain. Self-sustain, yes. Well, she didn't have a complimentary uh, officer that would work with her. So as a result, because she was violating the curfew of the parole, uh, she had to go to a halfway house, okay. which meant that that was her sentence, to go back to the halfway house for 30 days. Mm. And in doing so, she wouldn't be able to work and she wouldn't be able to pay her rent. Oh. And she would lose, lose her place. Yeah. And all that we'd worked so hard for, it was like a, a, almost a one year journey. She was so upset because she was falling back. And um, she had a, a, out of that, when she went to the halfway house, she had a 15 day blackout, which mm-hmm. means that you can't talk to anybody for 15 days. Okay. But she did have a chance to talk to a family member that was able to get to our agency. Okay. And what we were able to do was we were able to gather together the funds to pay her rent while she was meeting the requirements of having to do the 30 days in the halfway house. Faithfulness of God. She was able to sustain and to keep her place. And what mindset, what had her crazy, crying and upset, ended up being her joy when she got out. Mm. And she found out that behind the scenes, without communication directly with her because she was on blackout, that behind the scenes, the faithfulness of our organization had working. Paid her rent and that's paid right. Her, kept that house part. That's for right. Her. That's right. And the faithfulness of God making a provision. Those two things turned her from being someone who was just so distraught yes. to being someone who felt so blessed. Amen. And you know, and that's another thing. You know, with with reentry, uh, it's such a display of God's work in their yes, lives. and love in the lives of people. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, demonstration, love That's and right. demonstration. That's right, and, and favor. Yes. People who've never heard of favor or people who say, oh, you always say the favor. We got favor, the favor of God. Yeah. When you demonstrate, when you walk in favor yes, Lord. and you see things like that unfold, it makes you understand there must be a God yes, because absolutely. they know that there's no way that this could have happened. Absolutely. God can turn doom and gloom into joy. I know that's right. And so that was one story. Another story you're familiar with, it was like, you know, women when they come home, you know, it's, 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 it's so hard 
the mindset of I need a man. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's not just women who are incarcerated oh, you know who think that they need a man. Right, absolutely. A lot of our sisters feel as if if you don't have a man, there's something missing or you're lacking something, which mm -hmm. is so far from the truth. Right. And that's a mindset issue. Mm -hmm. So it ended up that while trying to, to, to make a way, getting from point A to point B, moving forward, you know, a pregnancy comes up. Mm -hmm. And as a result of the pregnancy, long story short, um, the place where they were living when you're pregnant and you're in one of the halfway houses, they will not allow you to stay there when you get almost time to deliver. Yeah, so they about the, they yeah. can't accommodate. And so they will give you your exit papers, nowhere to live, distraught, right? Absolutely. Came to you, was talking to you about it, came to me, was talking to me about it, and you called me and I said, you know what, not a worry, it's gonna work out. What ended up happening for two months, this is just so God, Yes. The the, the the person was put in a motel yes. for almost 90 days yes. until they delivered the child. That's right. There was a thought that maybe the child would be taken. Mm -hmm. The child was sort of taken, but given to a family member. Yes, yes. So there is not going to be a whole lot of a battle in seeing the child develop and grow up. Mm -hmm. And whereas the person started out so distraught with, I made a mistake, this yes. has happened, you know, God turned it all around mm -hmm. and made a provision, made a way out. And that's the favor. Mm -hmm. This person experienced favor. And yes. right now they still talk about how good God is, mm -hmm. whereas before there was not a whole lot of discussion about God at all. Absolutely. But right. it was a turnaround in mindset, mm -hmm. knowing that sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, you need something larger than yourself. Yes, you do. You need yes, you something, do. something larger than yourself that can make provisions, but not only make provisions, but you know, hold your hand. Absolutely. And and keep you know, uh, when you keep your mind on God, the Scripture tells us that we will be stayed in perfect peace. Yes. We will. Yes. Our minds will be stayed, and so as a result of that, her mind was kept. Yes. She could have lost her mind. Yeah, she was about to lose her mind. Yes. She was really going, it was really difficult. Just and the imagine. Fear and yes. the stress. And yes. then you're pregnant, eight, eight That's months right. pregnant. And that, you have that, nowhere to go. Nothing for the baby. It was, it was, no it was one, bad. They put her out, but they right. gave her nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. I know. And it was the weekend. Yes. <laughs> it was the weekend. Yes. I remember yes. the Pastor yes. Pam. But look at and we thought maybe three days we could help you. Yeah. Now it's a whole three months, and right. God just—I mean—so this is what God is doing for the organization. He's making provisions for us Favor. to be able to get funding that we thought we would never have. Mm -hmm. We've never had funding like this mm -hmm. ever, but God has touched us and blessed us so that we can have the opportunity to help women who are in crisis mm -hmm. to make it to the other side. But you know too, Pastor Pam, the, 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 oh. the crux to that is we must be willing yes. to do the work. Yes. You did yes. this, you and your husband and organization did this ministry a long time yes. before there was any funding. That's right. That's okay. Right. It was a lot of sacrifices That's there. Right. It was a lot of putting money to side out of your own personal yes. pocket yes. to help someone else. That's right. God blesses that type yes. of work. Yes. And a lot of time we so stingy with closing our hands. That's right. But you can't receive from God unless That's you right. open your hand. That's so and true. sometimes it's sacrifice. Mm. And it's those sacrifices nobody see. You yes. can't be looking for a pat on the back. That's right. You just need to know this is my assignment. Right. God has call me to do it yes. and he will cause it to grow that's right. and with the organization that we are we are part of with helping hands community yes. outreach yes. that's the scripture the lord gave me yes. and i stand yes. on it and i believe yes. it psalms 127 1 unless mm -hmm. the lord builds the house yes. the builder builders in vain mm -hmm. unless the lord watches mm -hmm. over the work the mm -hmm. laborer mm -hmm. labors in vain. in vain so for me 
It's the quality, not yes, the quantity. Yes, and so it yes. goes back to what you're saying yes. about being truthful, yes. being honest, mm -hmm. being willing to put the work yes, in. Yes. Realize it is not about you. Right. And when you're thinking about others, God will make sure the provision is there Absolutely. so that you can help others. Absolutely. Because that's what he did on the cross. That's right. That's it was right. about others. That's it right. was about us. That's right. That's you know, right. Jesus could have said, you know what? I'm not going to the cross. You know what? I'm a, I'm a, we're going to destroy all this and make it all over. Yes. But he said, I'm going to go for others. Yes. I'm going to do it for them. And so that is so, so important. That's Thank so you true. so much for what you're doing with Thank women uh, reentry. Yeah. I know you have so many other beautiful stories yes. That, yes. that continue to push the work on yes. and the ministry yes. on because there are tough times. You know, but this old song says, count your blessings. That's name right. One by one. That's you were right. about to say Yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that I said this because I want a complete balance in the conversation. Yes, absolutely. And you know, when you're going through, there's an opportunity for negativity, Always. right? Yes. When you don't get what you think you ought to have, when you think blessings are passing you by, and mm -hmm. how many of you have had that happen? Yes. When you don't think that, you know, things are going right in your life and, you know, you're working so hard mm -hmm. and you're putting so much in. I just want to make sure that I give you another little recipe to help you to get through. Mm -hmm. Be careful with this. Always honor people. Yes. No matter if you feel that someone has even done you wrong. Yes. And you will have that happen. People will not always treat you right. That's Believe you me. But That's you still truth. honor them. Mm -hmm. Not their negative ways or their negative voice or their negative action. Mm -hmm. You honor them as a human being that God has made. Yes. And that they're an opportunity for God to make a change mm -hmm. in their lives. Mm -hmm. You can't change them, but you still praise God for them. Absolutely. Don't ever dishonor your brothers and your sisters. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that that then takes away your blessing. It does. It really does. Just imagine this. Mm -hmm. If I say, oh, I don't like Dr. Brenda Bird. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of her because yesterday I called her and I couldn't get through to her. Mm -hmm. And so you know what? I'm going to take her name out of my phone book. I'm going to put a block on her because she knew I needed her at that time and mm -hmm. I start doing all and I'm dishonoring you every time I'm doing so I'm dishonoring mm -hmm. you're hurting you yourself too yeah I'm hurting myself mm -hmm. because you just didn't call me mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world I'm overreacting and being dishonorable towards you for no reason mm -hmm. when all I need to do is to say I make mistakes too, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to dishonor her because I'm going to need a break one day Absolutely. when I I'm mess up right. for somebody to still honor me no matter what. Absolutely. And isn't that what Jesus does? Yes. He looks beyond our faults yes, and supplies all of our needs. Yes, he does. And we have to be in the likeness of Christ mm -hmm. in some of those regards that we were, 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 were able to pull out from these examples that Jesus gives us mm -hmm. that we can get beyond so that we can be blessed blessed. Absolutely. Many of us lose our blessings because we dishonor people mm -hmm. when people don't do what we want them to do. My, my daughter was so funny. I, she says, uh, Ma, you know, I was, I was just thinking about something and she says, you know, why, why don't you talk to so-and-so anymore? Why don't they call you anymore? Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I never even noticed. It just kind of happened. We yeah. kind of just drifted apart. Mm -hmm. But she says, but I can tell you, she says, because when people don't want when you don't do what people want you to do, then people lose an interest in you. Absolutely. And I says, Absolutely. hmm, I never thought about that. But that's so true. And sometimes, you know what, sometimes it's good for them just to go away. Yes, you yes. You know, because it, 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 it can hinder. That's right. Because, you know, um, one thing I've learned <clears throat> as I've continued to mature and continue to grow in the Lord mm -hmm. and serve the last 30-something years, yes. it's good, You, it's important to know who's in your circle. That's right, that's right. And it's important to have the right people in your that's circle. That's right, that's right. You know, sometimes people want to, we want to uh, surround ourselves with people that's going to tell us how great we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know what I'm that's saying? Right. Even when that's we're not right. being that's great. Right. That's so true. And so you need to have people around you who will speak truth. That's right. Because that's how you grow. That's and it. And that's how you receive. Okay, just because I think it's this way, 
It mm-hmm. may be another way. That's it right. may be a better way. That's it may right. be an easier way. That's right. You know, but if I, you know, it's the only thing that I thought, I'm putting people around me that says, oh, you're the greatest thing since I've read. Oh, God, you just, you just, mm-hmm. you just mm-hmm. walking on water. That's right. That's right. When and then we know it's not true. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> it's right. It's not true. Oh, my goodness. And you're so, so right. Yeah, so it's important to be, a, be I call it a safe space. Yes. With people that you can just be who you are. That's right. And they love you just the that's same. That's right. That's but right. But in that, Work on your stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so that yes. you can heal properly. Yes. So as a people helper, I love mm-hmm. that word, people helper, yes. that you are safe, that you are dealing with your stress and That's your brokenness truth. and your issues because we all have them. That's right. And it's not that we won't have them. It's how we handle, handle them. them. That's you right. Know? That's Am I right. going to take this and use this as a tool to grow? Yes. Or am I going to let it defeat me? That's right. And this is a lot of things that we need to just work on as right. as women, women of honor. Women of honor. That That's word for honor sure. carries a yes. lot of weight yes, it behind does. it. Yes, it you does. You know, and it's not a, a title. When the Lord gave me that women of yes, honor, I was yes. like, wow. And when I start looking at the word and thinking mm-hmm, about that mm-hmm, word, mm-hmm. this is a woman that are worthy yes, yes, of yes, honor. This yes. is not somebody you just like because you, they're your friend mm-hmm, or, or whatever. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. women of honor who walks yes. in integrity, yeah. who walks in love, who are strong yes. in their, their assignments, mm-hmm. and they're doing the work, but they're loving others. And yes. it's a whole list mm-hmm. that I can give you in reference to honor. Yeah. So let's look at your book. Okay. I wanna, I, I'm reading your book. Okay. I'm already on chapter 12. All right. And okay. I just got it the other day. All right. But the name of this book is Empowering Women to Triumph Over Ministry Challenges. And so what stuck out to me in, in the seminar, you was reminding us to read through the con- the table of contents and pull out parts that jump right out to us. Yes. But I'm just reading through because okay. all of it's good to me. <laughs> all, right. all of it's good. But the one that I'm, I want to ask you a little bit about is uh, your healing is a priority before helping others. And this is kind of the conversation that we've been talking about today. Mm-hmm. You have 14 um, how-tos here, and mm-hmm. I've already circled about eight of them. Okay. But it says the importance of giving the healing you need in ministry before helping others cannot be overstated. This is why we keep going back to mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. about self-care and healing yes. yourself and being healed and spending time with yourself. All of these things are so key and so important so that you can be healthy to walk out and live out your assignment, whatever it may be. Yes. So it is not, it cannot be overstated. Serving in ministry or whatever capacity that you're serving in can be incredibly fulfilling, but it also presents unique challenges that can take a toll on your on you emotionally, mental and spiritual well-being. Prioritizing your own healing is essential before extending help to others. Here's why. And so you give us a whole list. So mm-hmm. one that I want to look at Two jumped out to me. Okay. Main authenticity. You've been talking to us about that um, all uh, this whole segment. Healing your own wounds allows you to approach others from a place of authenticity. It's easier to empath- empathize, excuse me, mm-hmm. and connect with those you are helping when you've walked a similar journey. Another one jumped out to me. Break the cycle. Mm-hmm. Many of us are just going in a cycle, going right. around, and we're wondering, well, what's going on? Why I can't get out of this? It's good. Sit with yourself. Mm-hmm. I keep hearing that. Mm-hmm. Step back and just evaluate what you can accomplish for that day. Mm. What, for me, what works for me is writing a list. Yes. I may have 20 things on my list, but I can't get 20 things done today, right. Pastor Pam. That's right. So I go through those 20 things, and I take the first five priorities. And today, I want to do pri- uh, prioritize one, two, on the way to five. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My goal is to get all five completed. However, if I get three mm-hmm. completed, that's a good, good day. day. So I know that four and five goes on to priority one, one and two, two for two tomorrow. More. And that helps me keep my peace. Yes. Helps me to do the variety of things that I like to do. Yes, yes. And so it says break the cycle. Addressing your own wounds helps you break any negative cycles or patterns that might unconsciously affect your interactions with those you're helping. 
unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just do things out of habit. That's right. Break the cycle. Yeah. If you don't do a list, start doing one. Just come out of the norm so that you can get off of that that will of continuing to do mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and celebrate recovery and redemption, we call that insanity. Yes. Doing yes, the, same the same thing, thing over and over mm -hmm. again and expecting a different outcome. Yes, yes. Change your strategy. If it's just one thing, mm -hmm. change it and then continue to grow in that. That's right. Another one jumped out to me, emotional resilience. That's what I see yes. when I see you. Oh. Emotional <laughs> resilience. But now I know the secret. You mm -hmm. sit with yourself uh -huh, in the morning. That's right. And you pray. Prayer yes. is so essential. Mm -hmm. Prayer is so key. Mm -hmm. Emotional resilience. When you've dealt with your own pain, you are better equipped to handle the challenges that come with ministry without being overwhelmed by your own unresolved emotions. Mm -hmm challenges will come within that day that's right that's right like you said before you can have a good day you can have a bad day Absolutely. and you can have a combined day that's right that's and right. so what do you do in that and when we continue to put these things into place sit with ourselves mm -hmm. pray write a list for priority yes. it helps us to build emotional resilience mm -hmm. i love that yes this one i put in exclamation points so important mm -hmm. number eight continued personal growth oh yes seeking healing excuse me mm -hmm. allows you to continue growing personally and spiritually your growth is an asset as you guide others on their own journeys yes. look at that your growth is an asset mm -hmm. we must never stop growing that's it sometimes and this is a bad habit that we all women do mm -hmm. we put our lives on hold to help others, to yes. help our children, yes. to help our husbands, to help mm -hmm. people on the job, to help yes. our friends. Right. You know, friend call upon you, you go running. Yes. This is something that we do because naturally we are nurturers. Yes. And so it's in us to go the running when someone call on us. However, we need to continue to grow spiritually and emotionally and physically ourselves that yes. we will be healthy. We're winding on our time. So I want to look at these last two. Mm -hmm. Emotional availability. Wow. Emotional availability. When you address your own hurts, you can be emotionally available for your friends and your families and on your job. You can be available right. because you're not bound up and you're not hurting and struggling with your own stuff. Absolutely. So you are available for those who need your support without being overwhelmed by your own unresolved emotions. Mm -hmm. And the last one I want to talk about is a more vibrant ministry. Mm -hmm. You will be a happier mother and wife <laughs> in your home. <laughs> you will be a help, help, a happy person to work with on your job. Yes. It says a healed and whole ministry can offer a more vibrant, impactful ministry. Your passion, energy, and enthusiasm for serving others are restored. Yes. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much. I am really, really, really enjoying this I'm book. I'm glad about that. Thank you so yes. much for giving yes. it to me. I'm telling you, it was. I was looking at it, I said, Pastor Pam has been reading my mail. <laughs> so as we wind down, first of all, I want to say to you, happy, blessed anniversary oh, to you and you. Pastor uh, Dave. Yes. I thank you so much for the sacrifice, for coming on my mm. show when you were planning your anniversary. <laughs> and so I thank you so much. And so as we wind down, I just want to say again, thank you so much. I love you. Thank appreciate you. you. Appreciate and you. I just want to say to our listening audience, this uh, you can reach out to me for more information, and you can reach out to Pastor Pam. You know my information, Pastor Brenda Bird at Christian Pentecostal Church, 718-273-5850. Pastor Pam, just give your, you have a minute or so, but give your information, and okay. we're going to close. I'm with Communities in Cooperation, Inc., also known as CIC. Yes. And you can contact us at any time. You can go to cic.we.care at gmail.com. That's cic.we.share at gmail.com. 
if you send that to us, any, any, any type of communication, we'll promise to get back to you within 24 hours. So thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm so excited about all that we've spoken about. Yes, and I thank you for coming on my show, Woman of Insight. Yes. You have so much. You need. I have to have you come back, right. but after your busy schedule, because I know you have so much to do. You are truly a renaissance woman, oh, and I appreciate you. I love you. I thank you for all the help and the support that you have given me personally and how you have always supported me. So you be blessed. Again, happy anniversary. And to my audience, happy, blessed Thanksgiving to you and your family, and hope to see you again soon. God bless you, and make sure that you work on your self-care and be whole. God bless you. See you next time.